Ryan, what's on your radar? Well, back in December, the news outlet Insider published the results of their investigation into, con into congressional stock trading, which they called Conflicted Congress, and followed it up by pressing Pelosi on whether members should be banned from trading stocks. She gave quite the answer. We have a responsibility to report in the stock, on the stock, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that five-month review, but if the people aren't reporting, they should be. Why do you think yeah. Because this is a free market and people, we are a free market economy, they should be able to participate in that. Now that's nonsense on several levels, of course. The so-called free market is heavily dependent on the laws it operates within. Just the whiff of a potential new law regulating an industry can instantly move a stock. A lot of people focus on how members of Congress can get inside information and trade on that. And yes, that's a problem, but the bigger problem is that members of Congress can move stocks just with their own public comments. It's only human to think twice about, say, condemning Google if you own a bunch of shares of Google or if you just bought a bunch of calls. And the word for that is corruption. It corrupts the system. Yesterday, Pelosi reversed herself and is moving forward with legislation aimed at banning members of Congress from trading stocks. Now, Pelosi may simply be bowing to the inevitable and caving to broad public pressure, but there was a specific internal push that looks like it also made a difference. It's called a discharge petition, and it was in the works from Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So there's a rule in the House of Representatives that allows 218 members who sign a discharge petition to force a bill onto the floor for a vote. Now, last week, Ocasio-Cortez got that process started by filing a bill with the Rules Committee that would force a vote on a stock trading ban. Her resolution was filled with requirements like banning amendments and moving immediately to a vote that would make the committee very unlikely to pass it. But not passing it was the point, because a bill has to sit there for seven legislative days without action before a discharge petition can be requested and filed. And yesterday was, coincidentally, the seventh legislative day. So once a discharge petition gains momentum, it can move extremely quickly because nobody wants to be left behind. And with Kevin McCarthy for it, Republicans might have signed on just to embarrass Pelosi and she'd have lost control of the process quickly. So by reversing herself, she regains that control. But if she drags her feet, the bill is still sitting there and could be discharged at any moment with very little effort. In fact, if she doesn't move quickly, a House Republican might do it and beat her to the punch. And so I, I thought this was a, a, fun, a little fun civics moment, too, because there is, this, there is this fascinating little lever that people can pull in Congress, that if you can get a majority of people to sign a petition, people who are elected to Congress, then the Speaker of the House, by rule, cannot block your bill from coming to the floor. And so what it does is it allows a an issue that has broad bipartisan support and by bipartisan like both both parties among in congress but m most importantly among the people but is opposed by specifically by the, the house leadership that they can't block that forever and there, there's no better example of the, the, the perfect dynamic than this like a system set up that says uh we're going to write the laws the laws are going to influence stock prices, and we're going to trade stocks <laughs> based on that. And one member was pointing out to me yesterday that for years they've been passing these, these symbolic uh, votes against uh, these COLA raises. You know, so no, no cost of living allowances have been given to members of Congress for many years. And they all proudly say, we, we voted against raising salaries. Right, but they're all millionaires now because they, yeah. And they're, yeah. so they're taking their little vig off the top on the side. And that's been, that's kind of been the informal arrangement. Like, okay, we'll, we'll make $174,000 a year. We won't ever give ourselves a raise, but we can trade stocks on the side and more than make up for the average member of Congress gets richer and richer every year. It, now it's a rich man's game. It didn't mm -hmm. used to be. It wasn't always. It wasn't yeah. always the case that everyone in Congress was very wealthy or exited so Congress very wealthy. Right. Now it is. Right. Yeah. Harry Reid being one of the best examples. Yeah. Like born in a, a house that is that most people would look at it. It's like that's not even a house. Like what? Like what is that? How did an entire family even survive in that? No plumbing. Uh, 
did nothing but elected office his whole career, left with like twenty, thirty million dollars. Right. Joe <laughs> Biden. Like, Joe Biden was a you know modest uh, wealth at the beginning of his career. Um, although he wound up, when he left, I think he was. You could you could you could trace his wealth. You could actually say, oh, okay, his 170, because he started making good money. And as a 30-year-old senator in 1972, that salary was actually, you know, put you at a much higher, mm -hmm. put you much closer to the top 1% mm -hmm. than that salary does today right. because people have, you know, right. blown past it. Reed did it the old school way, shady real estate deals <laughs> with, with, like, donors. This is the new, this is the new way. Uh, oh, this, and, and the, I think uh, one of the things that people talk about going on, you, have, you take meetings all day with business representatives. They can, they can slip in a little info for you. You know, we, we've got this press release coming on Thursday that's going to announce that our drug cleared, uh, you know, the, the third phase of this FDA trial, whatever. Uh, and they can, they can legally maybe share that information as a way of lobbying their members of Congress and telling them what a great company they are. The member of Congress is not supposed to. It's against the law at this point. But the member of Congress says, hmm, phase three went well, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jack. Oh, interesting. Hey, Jack, let's do 1,000 shares. Yeah. yeah. And so now there's so much pressure that even Pelosi has said, I don't like this, but. What, what did you think about her, her comments that, well, what are the, it should be across the board, the judiciary should be bound to this too? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Saki was asked about it, and she suggested that a agencies, executive, you know, ca cabinets, like everybody, yeah. look, there's Vanguard, you know, yeah. there's index funds. Just you, you can't have the Supreme Court, though, because then the Supreme Court will strike it down. <laughs> That's true. Okay, let's carve out. You have to carve it out. With carve the out at least five of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only five members yeah, yeah. of the Supreme Court at any one time yes. may engage in this dog trade. Whichever five approve this yeah. are allowed to. Yes, I think that would be struck down yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to get their their little their little piece on the side yeah. in order to do their government service. Anyway, this this policy is something that all people support, as far as right. I can tell. Find find me the the common citizen, the common man, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Socialist, anyone who thinks that Congress should be engaged in stock trading. And the real uh, fury up on Capitol Hill right now is from senior aides who are written into this particular House bill. So senior aides above oh. a certain level would mm -hmm. also be barred. And they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's the perk that uh, I don't get spoons here. thrown at my head for, for this. Right. <laughs> and I could go make $400,000 on K Street. I'm here making one hundred. dollars Well, they will whatever. eventually. Uh, they, right, will, just, they will. They will just. Wait. Two years from now, you will. Right. You'll get there. Yeah. Anyway, looking forward to what's on your radar next. <laughs>